Hello everyone. I have been given the topic pressure correction method and this is an important topic. I hope you will understand this small lecture. Before heading to the topic, we have a number of questions we have to answer. Why do we need pressure correction? Where is the method used? And what do we analyze from this? So all these questions can be answered after we have a short recap of what we have done so far. So you can skip this but I will say what is CFT. So CFT is a type of analysis that provides insight into solving complex problems and allows engineers the ability to, to test the effects of fluid flow in their designs. So most important point, it is done without the need to conduct real world experiments. We don't want to conduct real world experiments. We have to just typically use uh, computers or programs to analyze this. So safety can simulate aerodynamics, thermal heat transfer, turbulent flow, and by solving PD and Navier Stroke equation. So we will come into that later. So since safety is an uh, safety is an analysis, it generally involves three main elements. The three main elements are pre-processing, solver, and post-processing. So we generally we will concentrate on the pre-processing and the solver part. So this is uh, the model of how safety works. So we basically define a physical system. Then uh, we will uh, we will have a mathematical model that is uh, governing equations uh, that governs the fluid flow. Then we will uh, discretize it and convert into a system of algeb algebraic equations. And using suitable numerical solutions, we will uh, find the results. Navier-Stokes equation. Now, Navier-Stokes equation describes mostly momentum, that is x momentum, y momentum, and z momentum. But in some textbook, Navier-Stokes equation is primarily the continuity, that is the continu continuity equations, the momentum equations, the solve, and the energy equations. So we will follow that convention. Now. These equations are the governing equations for a compressible flow. Now the no Navier-Stokes equation cannot be solved analytically or it does not have a general solution representing all these equations. So all these equations it does not have a general solution. So okay. So but uh, but it can be solved if we apply special conditions such as steady flow, unsteady, incompressible, initial and boundary conditions, etc. Here we have commonalities between the equations. Can we write these equations in a general form? Yes. If we introduce a general variable phi, we can write it in, in the form. So this is the general uh, form. Um, so hope that you all, you all understand what I am saying. So uh, can we obtain continuity, continuity equation from this equations yeah of course just put phi equal to 1 so uh, next thing we will uh, talk about that in an example so can we obtain uh, the x moment equation yeah of course phi equal to just put phi equal to u so uh, this transport equations it is basically general form writing the uh, the pre this equations general form writing these equations so it should uh, it doesn't mean it should all represent all the equations. There, is, there are more equations than these. So this is basically the primary equations, but uh, there are more equations. So it, it doesn't mean this transport equation represent all these equations, but uh, it can involve transport properties like temperature, velocity, pressure, and uh, etc. So let's go on to an example. Of course put phi equal to 1 uh, this is this is going to be 1 this is going to be 1 and this is going to be uh, 1 uh, so we will neglect diffusive term and source term so we will neglect this ter two terms so hence we obtain the continuity equation you can check ok and we have obtained the continuity equation so we have mo move on to the module 2. 
so uh, it is basically if i uh, introduce finite difference method so first uh, we will have a physical problem so let's say a conducting rod so we will divide this into number of nodes okay we will divide into number of nodes that is that this red dot markings 1 2 3 and 4 so we will identify the governing equations for that particular problem uh, here we have k d square t by d square plus s equal to 0 so this is uh, general conduction equations uh, conduction equations so if we look onto the transport equations it is basically uh, we can obtain it by neglecting the convective term and the rate of change can be directed by assuming steady state okay so we, we will have both these terms that is so this is the diffusive term and this is the source term see similar right so we have obtained this then we will apply the boundary conditions so and then we will discretize it so what is discretization so uh, it is simple it means governing equations only say about these governing equations only say about continuous distribution of variables over the solution domain so say let's say for a temperature so if we look on to the partial differential equation this is the partial governing equation so we will obtain if we solve it we will obtain very close values like it will be continuous if we look from far away it will be continuous so it will uh, in CFT it will uh, occupy more storage spaces so we don't need that uh, kind of thing so we will discretize it like if we, if we take one node then we will give uh, some space not continuous it is not continuous we will give some space and so this is basically uh, a discretization so uh, here let's say temperature uh, we will identify the temperature at this point then this point and this point next this point so uh, we will we are not interested in between these nodes we are not interested there are there may be many points between this but we after we discretize this uh, we will not consider the, the spaces in between so Uh, that is basically uh, the discretization process and now we will move on to the calculation uh, so we will obtain algebraic equation so it can be solved by uh, two methods direct method and iterative method so we will learn that later and these are the some important points now uh, this module we are move, move on to module 3 that is the finite volume method so in finite volume method uh, it, we will not divide it into nodes like this we will not divide into nodes but what do we divide it into a volume control volume so we have this first volume second volume third volume fourth volume fifth volume sixth volume and so on so here it is uh, we will divide it into control volumes okay so uh, and uh, you may all notice that the in this control volume there is a center node so what is the significance of this so uh, let's say temperature uh, we identify the temperature over this control volume uh, using uh, numerical methods say uh, if you want to represent this whole temperature distribution uh, distribution then we, we consider a node at the center so it is more simple that way right like uh, we consider uh, center of mass like concentrator all uh, mass all at the center like that we will consider this so that is the significance of this node so the rest of the same as the uh, governing equation we will uh, have we should have a governing equations that is uh, that is important then uh, then there is a difference from the FTM so we will in FTM we will just identify the governing equation but 
after identify governing equations we will integrate it over the control volume this is the uh, next important part then we will have uh, for FEM and FTM there, there are separate schemes to solve discretize it so we will apply that and we will get algebraic equations and we will sol solve this using numerical methods such as uh, direct methods or iterative methods so this is uh, not some important points for FEM so um, a steady convection diffusion equation so steady means this rate of change rate of change term will disappear okay so it is both the conversion and diffusion so we will get convective term and diffusive term plus source term if we need anything okay so we uh, if we neglect this uh, here only conversion and diffusion equation and it is steady state so it will uh, we will get the equation transformed to this and then we integrate over the control body okay so uh, let's have a again a quick recap of what we have learned so far so module one uh, governing we learned about governing equation of the fluid flow you know so we we need to know uh, that governing equations to solve any fluid problem so module one we learned about the governing equation in module two uh, for solving governing equations we need to discretize it right so uh, for that discretization uh, we learned two methods FTM FTM and FEM so these are the two methods uh, we are learning so uh, now for module 3 what we have learned that uh, oh before that uh, what is FTM FTM divides the uh, physical or the uh, physical model into uh, nodes but the FEM dis uh, divides it into control volume and, and the basic difference it is that in FEM we will integrate the governing equations over a control volume so uh, now we move on to module 3 so we use FEM to discretize diffusion problem so can we obtain diffusion problem this so we don't need convection so we will cancel this and if it is steady then this also becomes zero so this is the diffusion term and uh, we use FEM to so uh, discretize it in module 3 so in module 4 what will uh, this is the uh, steady convection diffusion equation is the module 4 and that is uh, we are up to now that okay we will now discretize it so so discretization process we have learned uh, the discretization process to for steady conversion equation uh, so we will not move into that but we have an important point here we assume that the velocity field is somehow known so you can see that if equal to rho u right so here we use u so of course we need to know the value of u to solve this so we assume that value here in module 3 we assume that value steady state conversion diffusion equation we assume the u value but is that that is not possible because we have to the safety solver has to uh, find the uh, velocity field so velocity field or uh, need to be solved and found out and that will be our starting point to pressure correction method so so here we have some methods to finding out the velocity field so after finding out the velocity field we can solve it right like how, how we have solved the conversion diffusion equation so that is why uh, these are given different methods are used for normal numerical solution of navier stroke equation that is why this heading is there so mm, in incompressible we don't need to uh, consider a compressible flow we consider incompressible flow here so uh, we in incompressible flow we have learned two such methods the vorticity and stream function methods we have learned uh, Manisar has taught us and now we will learn pressure velocity coupling so and in this pressure velocity coupling we can see the pressure correction methods such as symbol simpler simplex and piso so we have also using staggered and collocated grid and we will discuss that later so
so this is the pressure velocity coupling basic summary of what we are going to do for calculating the velocity field so um, pressure based approach velocity field is obtained from the momentary equation uh, the pressure field is extracted by solving a pressure version equation so these are the basic things uh, we will explain that in detail so we are following the same procedure so if you recall that uh, in heat conduction equation we wrote down the governing equation and uh, then we discretized it either by FDM or FEM then we obtained some algebraic equations for each node or uh, for FDM each node we will say and FEM each control volume then we will use some um, solver method like direct method or iterative method to see this. so we will follow the same procedure here we have to find the velocity okay so we will write down the governing equation first then we discretize it then we will obtain algebraic equation and numerical solution so we will write down the governing equations so the governing equations are x moment equation y moment equation and continuity equation so x moment and y moment because we are considering 2d space sorry so 2d space we are considering and there is u velocity and v velocity so both these moment equations are needed and since the involvement of velocities are there it should satisfy continuity equation so so we wrote down the all the equations governing our uh, fluid flow now we encountered a problem so in this equations we can see there are non-linear quantities and also the most complex issue is role played by the pressure so so this is the pressure terms in both equations so we don't have any basic equations or general transport equations to solve the pressure term so we are in a dilemma uh, now we have to uh, find the pressure terms so what we do is that we some uh, so whoever found the way to solve this issue thought that well now we have to find both velocity field and pressure field right so we have to find u now we have to find pressure field so well why not just give values for both and using a particular algorithm we can improve this guess guesses progressively so uh, why not give particular value so we don't know both the uh, velocity field and pressure field so why uh, why not give velocity field some value pressure give some value then we will continuously improve upon so these are guesses we will kind of progressively improve upon these guesses and then we will converge it into a solution like we will get velocity field and pressure field which satisfies all these equations so this is how the problem is solved how using simple algorithm and that was algorithm to this is a basic iteration procedure of the simple algorithm So let's take a quick de detour of what we have done so far. So, for example, heat conduction equation. This is heat conduction equation. So, as per our process, uh, first we will write governing equation. That is, this is the governing equation. So, next we will discretize it. So, most popular discretization method is FEM. Uh, FEM. So we will divide the element so we have a physical system over which we have to find the heat distribution or temperature distribution so we will divide that uh, physical body into a uh, number of meshes so or we can say a number of control volumes so one two three there may be there are more but I, I have only um, I have only represented three control volumes say. 
so uh, when we solve this what hap usually happens is that so so what usually happens is that we will CFT solver will solve over this control volume okay there will be a temperature distribution over this control volume and store the values at its center so this will we will obtain T1 but this T1 represents the temperature distribution over this control volume just like that we will get another point T2 uh, so it will show the temperature distribution over this control volume and we will obtain T3 which will show the temperature distribution over this control volume so that is a basic you know so what CFT solver does it shows the value of the temperature at the center so so what the CFT solver mainly does is that if there is a temperature let's say if there if we didn't uh, consider the temperature but velocity it will store the value of the velocity at its center so uh, like that it, uh, it is a pro this is a process happening so so we need to we needed to find the velocity field right so velocity we need to find and this was the governing equation so we are just following the step first we will define the governing equation so we wrote the governing equation now we here um, in heat condition equation there was only one variable t but here we have two variables that is u and also pressure so u or v both are velocities so and also pressure gradients okay so there are two variables so when we divide the control volume we will have to store two variables say okay so that the safety solver first does that so it we, we will define control volume and we will uh, have to store the distribution over this control volume the, uh, the property distribution or the uh, whatever va variable we are giving the variable distribution over this control volume is stored at the center right we consider it like that so it will have to store both pressure and velocity at the center but due to checkerboard problem so there is a checkerboard problem so we have al already studied that uh, we and Manisa has taught us so due to checkerboard problem we cannot store both pressure and velocity at its center so what do we do now is that so let's say we consider a mesh okay this was the normal uh, normal mesh we will consider but we will consider a mesh and we will stagger it so th this will be uh, this will be the introductory part to staggered grid so we what we did was uh, we will consider mesh and we will stagger it so why do we stagger it so this was the original control volume right uh, with the pressure at this fellow center so what uh, what we'll do to solve this checkerboard problem is that so this is a staggered grid and now what we'll do so this is what this was the original main control volume this is um, the this blue representation is a main control volume so the, the uh, at its center we, we will store is one pressure the two where we have two variables uh, pressure and velocity so the pressure we will store at this main control volume and for velocity what we'll do is that we will store at the face of the main control volume right not at center but at the face so here we will have the u velocity stored and also v velocity we will store at this part so how we will represent so pressure was represented at uh, at the uh, center by a node so we will represent the velocity by an arrow so this both so there will be an arrow to in inlet arrow and also an outer arrow so there will also be a 
control volume here and there will also be a control volume here so okay so this is what this is the representation of uh, u variable and v variable so this is the coordinate uh, we will uh, identify say we will have to know where the u variable is so we will look on to this coordinate and represent where it is so let's move on to the next slide so this was the uh, basic control volume J we just added the staggered grid also okay so representing the um, co coordinates uh, we will find out how we will represent the coordinates so the small represents for the well uh, small grid so j is small uh, in the red lines we will represent it for the velocity components and for black the black part which is a capital i n j we will represent it for the pressure so this is the this is the representation say for i we will get this point so i we will trace it here and for j we will trace it here so we will obtain the coordinates are small i and capital j for u velocity so what about p we will get capital i and capital j so this is the representation of the so we, it is easy you know the cartesian the coordinate representation so what we will do now is that Mm, so again uh, representing what we've done so far so this was the original uh, structured grid uh, so this was our main control volume what will we stored the pressure at its center and we stored the velocity at, at its face so for that we, we considered another mesh so here it is so this is how it works so so this is the we will term this as u control volume so let's isolate this control volume so let's remove all that and we will get the normal control volume so this is the west face and this is the east face right so we will just use the uh, equations we studied in module 3 to solve this control volume so for every so if you look here so for every main control volume there are four different control volumes so one two three and four associated with it so if we uh, uh, consider we want to solve here so we want to find the values here so we will have to solve for four different for this is the main control volume so we will have to solve the velocity control volume at four different at least four different phases also then only we will uh, we'll get the value for both pressure field and velocity field so this is ha what is happening so for this control volume the equation after uh, after discretization for this control volume the equation obtained is this so this is the coordinates so here it is small i and for u velocity this is representation of the uh, coordinate so that is what here uh, considered here so this what is this so this is simply a w u w plus a e u e so some of the neighboring nodes and this is the uh, pressure correction we applied and we will uh, tell in detail what all the terms are but before that so this uh, this will be the equation for u control volume so we also have v control volume right so this will be the equation for the v control volume so let's compare that So let's start comparison between both the what we are done in module 3 and now what we are doing. 
so in module 3 we obtain so there are three different control control volumes so here so for each control volume for, for each control volume we will have defined this equation okay for here also we will have obtained this equation like this so uh, we will obtain this equation like this so for now we have three equations like this right so we will then solve uh, as many number of so there are in uh, many 10 number of control volumes then we will obtain after discretization this 10 number of equations then we have to solve that 10 equations then we will get the value of phi for each control volume so this f this is the phi value for this and this is the phi value for this so we have to solve this so this is what we have uh, done in module 3 so in module 5 what we'll do is we will solve the u control volume with this and b control volume with this equations so for a particular main control volume so we will have one so this is the f one control volume two control volume so here also we will have the third and a fourth control volume so we will have to obtain equations for all these control volumes like this okay u control volume so this for u control volume we have we will have obtained this equation after discretization so v control volume we will have obtained this equation so rest of the method is discussed by Aaron Matthew uh, by simple algorithm so this was the general representation now this is the same as this so this u for the u control volume it is similar to this so source term this is the source term bij uh, neighboring nodes the sum of the neighboring nodes this is a neighboring nodes so so hope you all understand this so uh, this equation is similar to this equation so so what about the value of a p a w and all so how we will solve this so basically there are we have studied many different methods so we will consider both two important methods we will consider so central difference in method we will obtain a w e and a p through two uh, constants diffusion constant and mass flux constant f and d so for affine difference in method so we will obtain a p a w a value by uh, solving or finding out d w f w and all so just ref refer to that uh, now so this is the equations we have done now uh, this is all to that uh, staggered grid so delta b is the volume of the u cell b i j that is b i j here b i j is s in the source term into uh, control volume delta v and a i j is the surface area of u control volume surface area uh, the pressure gradient uh, means of linear interpolation between the pressure nodes on the u control volume boundaries so th this is linear interpolation because this is taking difference between uh, two different nodes so this represents two different nodes so by linear interpolation we have obtained the pressure node also so this is all to that staggered grid concept and the pressure correction method so we will have summary so summary we needed to find the velocity field we prefer starting of the pressure correction method we needed to find the velocity field we tried to solve the given equation numerically so we have x defined y momentum and also continued to equation so we try to solve the governing equation uh, but then due to the presence of the pressure term uh, in x momentum term and y momentum term we couldn't uh, solve it like uh, the conventional way 
so we have to solve it using methods like symbol so bso and or other ways of symbol so these are iterative methods and storing of two variables at the center of control volume lead to dis disruptancy in calculation so uh, we cannot store because of the checkerboard problem we cannot store both pressure and volume at the center so we uh, staggered we uh, consider two different control volumes so at the main control volume we consider pressure at the center and uh, for velocity we will consider that the staggered control volume so that is what we have done and uh, we have we will also include a collocate collocated grid so this basically so this is a control volume so we will uh, bo store both pressure and velocity if we store both pressure and velocity at its center so it is known as collocated grid so that is all now uh, we uh, we didn't use collocated grid uh, but we use staggered grids to for storing pressure in the main control volume velocity field in the cell faces so simple algorithm and derivatives like simpler or so other pressure correction methods so there are the pressure we say it is pressure correction method because we need to find the pressure term to solve the governing equation so we will first find the pressure term then we will find the velocity field so that is why we are define it like that so this is the end of the lecture or this video so questions um act <laughs> okay thank you